I want to talk to you about a problem that a lot of Logic users face. Most of us think that if we drag in a file and it has embedded metadata, that the session will then conform to, in this case, 115. And often we find that is a mixed bag. So I'm gonna play this back. Let's see if it actually works with the tempo. Check it out. All right, so we hear that it's pretty much in time, but uh, you know, at this point, most of us would just like align this to the downbeat, right? We would look at the waveform, look at the, the transient and just see how it lines up. So let's see if this measures up here on this track. All right, so while it starts off well, we know that it does not end well. And so at this point, most of us would double click the audio region and we would go into smart tempo and we would ask for a little bit of help. You know, we go into edit, you know, perhaps analyze this again or remove the original recording tempo. And so I'll hit okay. And it has analyzed it, but it's not necessarily going to do anything in effect. Check it out. All right, so again, it's not necessarily working. So something you can try is apply the project tempo to the region and downbeat. That may be something that helps. Let's see. So that actually worked out quite well. So that's method number one that we can try. I still want to give you one other approach. Uh, what if you need something else because this isn't working? So at this point, another thing that I would recommend if you have material that is a little bit more complex, not as easy, don't just use the flex and follow on feature use either align bars or align bars and beats. I'll try that out. Let's see how this sounds in effect. Something else to consider is the flex mode. In this case, I have slicing on. It's an automatic feature uh, for something uh, you know of this nature. It's probably better to use rhythmic or polyphonic. So I'll choose polyphonic, probably the more, more complex of the algorithms. And let's see what this sounds like. So it sounds okay, but you can hear there's a little bit of a hiccup there at the end. So you would have to, you know, continue in here and, and, and do some surgery. So at this point, I would probably like bounce to audio, right? Get rid of this track and do my best to, to create a really nice edit that really works. Let's see if this sounds um, fairly realistic. Let me go ahead and chop off the beginning of that. And so let's see if this edit works. So that actually sounds pretty good right there. So the secret in that specific sauce is to bounce to audio and then start to edit outside. Okay, let me show you one more trick that will help tremendously. So if this method doesn't work, what I'm gonna want you to do is to delete the file. Again, delete any and all tempo information. Go to the mode and change it from keep mode, which is Logic's default to adapt, okay. So then from here, we're going to drag in that same file and logic is going to, in this case, not create a variable tempo map because it doesn't know, right? This file has tempo that's not correct. So then what we do from here, we're in adapt this time. We go into edit, remove original recording and analyze again. This time, because we're inside of adapt tempo, logic will then show us the truth which is this has a variable tempo. This is why it changes over time. So this is perfect because now we can edit this. Okay. And we can find the sweet spot here. I'm going to create a four bar loop. Let me delete that. And then I'll hit command U to create a cycle region. Let's see how tight this sounds. <laughs> can go ahead and just write the music like this. You can have everything follow this variable tempo map, but 
for the most part, most of us are going to want a steady tempo. So what do we do now? Again, delete the tempo information, and you can do that in the global lane here as well. And then we set this to your value. I'll do 115 to start. Again, I want to check to make sure that this is a perfect integer. It's not. I can see that it's a little shorter than it needs to be. So that's something that needs to be considered. Let me show you some workarounds. Inside of flex and follow, we're going to want to turn on either align bars or align bars and beats, and that will get you there. So what's happening underneath the surface, just to be clear, is that logic is analyzing by way of transient flex markers and the smart tempo uh, markers as well. And so that is going to help you when it comes to making these kinds of decisions. And the last thing I want to point out, like I did before, please do not let logic choose the flex time algorithm for you. Uh, last time I chose polyphonic, this time I will choose rhythmic. Let's see what kind of sonic results we get. Very good. One last recommendation before we go. Always bounce these findings, your results to audio, right? So we want to make sure that we bounce everything because a lot of this tech can be very volatile. And when you do bounce, again, use the marquee tool or the scissors, create a perfect edit. How do you know if you made a perfect edit? If you hover below the right or left most corner of any region, you click and hold, you can see the length, right? In my case, I have three, 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 two, three, nine. And so uh, I'm going to hold control shift and try and modify this so it reads a perfect four, zero, zero, zero. And if you ever have problems with that, again, all you have to do is create a selection and hit either Command-J or Control-B to bounce to audio, and then that should get you there. Let me just confirm this to be sure. You can see it says 4000, which means four bars, zero beats, zero divisions, and zero ticks. All right, this is Eddie Gray, the Logic Sensei, signing off. If you're liking the content, go ahead and subscribe, and if you're loving the content, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Thank you guys very much for the support. We will catch you on the next one. Cheers.